Welcome. Today we're going to review the passive using the present and past tenses. And after, we'll study the passive using the present continuous. Uh, we will review the present perfect tenses and then study the passive using the present perfect tenses. But first, let's have a look at some new vocabulary. First up, we have astronomy. Astronomy is the study of stars and planets. A telescope. A telescope is a tube-shaped instrument which is used to make planets and stars seem closer. A nova. A nova is a star which explodes and becomes brighter for a short time. A constellation. A constellation is a group of stars that have a shape and a name. A comet. A comet is a bright ball with a long tail and it moves around the sun. Now, next we have a meteor. A meteor is like a comet, but it's a piece of rock or metal which floats through the sky uh, in space and it makes a bright line when you see it at night as it falls through the Earth's atmosphere. A crater. A crater is a round hole in the ground made by something that has fallen from the sky. For example, a meteor. There are many craters on the moon. An observatory. An observatory is a special building from which scientists can look at the stars and the moon and the planets. There is a big telescope inside. Okay, over here. A UFO. A UFO is a strange object in the sky. Sometimes people think it's another spaceship from another planet. We have verb now, to orbit. To orbit is to travel in a circle around a much larger object. For example, the moon orbits around the Earth, and the Earth orbits the sun. Next, a satellite. Satellite is a machine that has been sent into space, and it goes around the Earth. It orbits around the Earth. Uh, we use them for radio, television, and other forms of communication. Let's review these words. Have. Astronomy. A telescope. A nova and a constellation, a comet, a meteor, a crater, an observatory, a UFO, the verb to orbit, and finally, a satellite. Let's review the passive using the simple present. First, let's look at these sentences, and you can see these sentences on your TV screen. Nine planets orbit the sun. Moons orbit some of the planets. Large craters cover the moon's surface. The moon reflects sunlight. Now these sentences are in the active voice. Let's look at the same sentences in the passive voice. The sun is orbited by nine planets. Some of the planets are orbited by moons. The moon's surface is covered by large craters. And sunlight is reflected by the moon. So we use the passive in spoken and written English. And in the active voice, the subject, or the doer of the action, is important. In the passive sentence, in the passive voice, uh, the object becomes the important thing. Let's look at this example. Nine planets orbit 
the sun. Now, in this sentence, nine planets is the important part, the important thing for the sentence. In the passive voice, the sun is orbited by nine planets. So the sun is the important thing in this sentence. Now, to form the passive voice, we use B plus the past participle. For the simple present, we're going to use am, is, or are plus the past participle. The subject determines if the verb is singular or plural. By and a noun, by plus noun, is sometimes used, but it's not always necessary. Now, we need to use a transitive verb for these passive sentences. A transitive verb is a verb that is followed by an object. Only transitive verbs can be used in the passive. Here are some examples. Transitive verbs. Okay, we have to draw. Because we can draw a picture. The picture is the object. And we have to invent. And we have to make. To discover. Okay, an intransitive verb is a verb that is not followed by an object, and intransitive verbs cannot be used in the passive. Here are some examples of transitive verbs, of intransitive verbs. Intransitive verbs. Right, for example, to come. There is no object after the verb come. To sleep. To walk and to fall. Some verbs are often followed by certain prepositions and they are used in the passive. For example, to be made of. Here's an example. The moon is not made of green cheese. To be made of, the moon is not made of green cheese. Some people used to think it was made of green cheese. To be used for. And here's an example. Telescopes are used for seeing planets in space. To be used for telescopes are used for seeing planets in space. And, of course, we can make questions using the passive. And these questions begin with is or are. Here's an example. Is Pluto orbited by three moons? Is Pluto orbited by three moons? Well, let's practice these. Rosa, you can go first. What is moonlight? Moonlight is what you see when you look at the moon at night. Moonlight is produced by the reflection of sunlight. Wonderful. Lewis, what is a crater? A crater is a hole on the moon. It's caused by a meteor, I think. I think you're right. Monica, what does a telescope do? A telescope makes things bigger. The moon's surface is made bigger by a telescope. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. And now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Craters are sometimes made by volcanoes. People on Earth see the moon at night. UFOs are used by people from other planets. Jupiter is orbited by 16 moons. Read and repeat.
passive, simple past tense. Now let's review the simple past using the passive. The comet wasn't seen by many people. The nova was seen by many people. A simple telescope was invented by the Dutch. Was your friend related to a Martian? He is very strange. For the simple past, we use was or were plus the past participle. Participle. There we go. So let's practice these now. Let's review the passive with the simple past. And Lewis, are there any observatories in Portugal? Yes, there are a few. They were built by scientists. Great. Rosa, do you know who discovered Pluto? Yes, I remember from my science class. Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tompa in 1930. Wow, you have a good memory. Yeah, my best friend from university had a brother named Clyde. It's an easy name to remember. Okay, I see. Monica, where is the Hubble Space Observatory? I think it's in the U United States. Uh, planets past Pluto were observed by scientists using that telescope. You're right, it is in the United States. Well done, everybody. And now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. It was thought that meteors were stars falling from the sky. Pictures of the moon were sent back to Earth. Many spaceships were launched to land on the moon. 24 people were sent to the moon between 1968 and 1972. Read and repeat. Passive, present continuous tense. Now let's learn the passive using the present continuous tense. Look at these sentences on your TV screen. Spaceships are being sent into outer space. A new rocket is being launched today. Voyages to planets are being prepared. Robots are being used to explore planets. So we use the present continuous in the passive voice to express an activity that is in progress at the time of speaking. It began in the recent past, is continuing at the moment, and will probably continue in the near recent future. It'll end sometime in the future. Uh, let's have a look. For example, spaceships are being sent to outer space. The spaceships were sent to outer space in the past. The ships are being sent to outer space now. And the ships will be sent to outer space in the future. To form the passive of the present continuous tense, we use am, is, or are, plus being, plus the past participle. Past participle. 
So to form the passive voice of the present continuous tense, we use am, is, or are, plus being, and the past participle. To form the negative of the present continuous tense, we use am, is, are, not, plus being, plus past participle. Oh. And to form questions using the passive voice in the present continuous, we use am, is, are, plus subject, plus being, and past participle, past participle, participle. Okay, for example, are space ships being sent to outer space? We can see we have the am is are, are subject, spaceships being past participle sent. Are spaceships being sent? to outer space. To form negative questions, same idea. We use isn't or aren't. So isn't or aren't plus subject plus being plus past participle. For example, aren't spaceships being sent to outer space? Aren't spaceships being sent to outer space? So the passive voice subject, spaceships, determines if the verb be is singular or plural. Here we have a plural subject, so we have the verb are because it's plural. Well, let's practice some of these now. So, Rosa, is the space program important in your country? No, it's not. Mexico is a poor country. Rockets aren't being built. No, they're not, are they? Good answer. Okay, Monica, has there ever been a Polish astro astronaut? I think there's one now. He's being trained in Warsaw. Lewis, what about your country? We have no interest in space. Plants are being prepared by the government so that we can grow crops more efficiently. We don't have enough money for a space program. Thank you. You were wonderful. Now let's look and listen. Look and listen. Space projects are being made by several countries. Communication satellites are being used by many countries. Space colonies are being planned by the USA. The food is being loaded onto the spaceship. Read and repeat. Present perfect tense. Okay, now let's talk about perfect tenses. And let's first review the present perfect tense. So look at the sentences on your screen. The rocket has already blasted off. The spaceship hasn't landed yet. Have you ever watched a movie on UFOs? And I've never been to the moon. So the present perfect tense 
is used to describe an activity or situation that occurred or did not occur, it didn't happen or did happen sometime in the past. We don't know exactly when. It can also be used to describe activities that happened several times in the past. For example, astronauts have landed on the moon a few times. Astronauts have landed on the moon a few times. I've watched that documentary on the sun four or five times. I've watched that documentary on the sun four or five times. So the basic form of the present perfect is have or has or haven't or hasn't plus past participle. The basic form of the present perfect is have or has or haven't or hasn't plus past participle. Now, many past participles are regular. Most of them are regular. You just add ed to the verb. Walk becomes walked. Land is landed. Live, lived, and work is worked. These are the regular past participles. Walk, walked, land, landed, live, lived, and work, worked. However, some verbs have irregular past participles. Let's look at them. We have, for example, no, known, be, been, eat, eaten, and fly, flown. These are irregular. We have no, known, be, been, eat, eaten, fly, flown. You just have to remember these ones. There's no rule. You have to learn the verb and think, is it a regular verb, a regular verb, or an irregular verb, and learn the past participles. So we use have with I and you, we, they, or a plural noun, and we use has with she, he, it, and a singular noun. Now, if we have pronouns, for example, I, then have becomes V-E, I've, or if we have, for example, she, then it becomes just S, she's. Already, yet, and just are frequently used with the present perfect. Well, let's practice some of these now. Lewis, how many times have you been to the moon? I haven't ever been to the moon. My brother would be happy if I lived on the moon. Good. Rosa, do you know what a nova is? Yes, it's a kind of star. I haven't seen a nova. Really? Okay, excellent. Monica, how many times have you seen the movie Star Wars? I have only watched once. I don't like horror films or science fiction films. Um, thank you. Okay, now we have practiced, and so now it is time once again to look and listen. Look and listen. Have you heard the news? They landed on Mercury. The astronauts have finished their work. Have you ever used a telescope? The U.S. has launched satellites hundreds of times. Read and repeat.
Well, now let's review another use of the present perfect. So look at these sentences. The astronauts have lived on the space station for six months. My father has known the astronaut for many years. We have been at the conservatory for three hours. And the astronauts have been on the rocket ship since February. So when we use since or for with the present perfect, this shows us that a situation has begun in the past and it continues to the present for some time. Uh, we use since plus a time in the past, a specific time in the past, for example, since February or since 1999. And we use for plus a quantity of time. The astronauts have been on the moon for six months, for six weeks, a quantity of time. Example, 1999. And here, example, six months. Okay, let's practice this. Monica, how long have astronauts been on the moon? They've been there for uh, since 1969. Uh, I don't think anyone has been there for, in a while. Very good. Lewis, how long have you been interested in UFOs? I've been interested in UFOs for many years. My father thinks there are no UFOs. I'm sure there are. I agree. Rosa, when did we learn that Saturn has rings? We have known that for many years. I think they were first seen in the 17th century. I think you are correct. So once again, thank you everybody. And now it's time for Look and Listen. Look and Listen. <laughs> Sheila has watched the stars through her telescope since she was a child. People have used telescopes for several centuries. We haven't put a man on the moon since the early 70s. Annie has known the astronaut for two years. Read and repeat. Present perfect tense. Okay, now let's look at the present perfect in the passive voice. Spaceships have been launched by Russia. Space technology has been improved. New comets have been discovered by astronomers. And the rocket engines have been started. To form the passive voice of the present perfect tense, we use have or has plus been plus past participle. So, for example, special clothing is our subject. Now, that is has been designed for astronauts. Special clothing has been designed for astronauts. Have and has been past participle. Okay, to form the negative voice of the present perfect tense, 
we use have or has not. Have, has, not, plus, been, plus, past participle. So, for example, special clothing has not been designed for astronauts. Special clothing has not been designed for astronauts. Okay, let's take this off the board and have a look at yes, no questions. So, yes, no question, using the passive voice of the present perfect, we use this formula. Has or have plus subject plus been plus past participle. Okay, let's have a look at this. Has special clothing, special clothing is a subject, been designed for astronauts. Has special clothing been designed for astronauts? And to form a negative yes-no question, we just use has or have not. So has or have not plus subject plus been plus past participle. Okay, hasn't. Subject, special clothing, hasn't special clothing been designed and for astronauts. Okay, now the, again, as usual, the passive voice subject tells us, tells us if we use the singular or the plural Negative. Has for the singular, special clothing is one, uncountable noun, so hasn't, or if it was plural, have not. Okay, that's practice. Uh, Lewis, what do you know about the U.S. space program? Satellites have been sent to Mars by the USA, and uh, space stations have been sent into space. Excellent. Monica, what do you know? I think a spaceship has been built to go to Saturn. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Rosa, what do you know about UFOs? I've never seen one. Well, I've never seen one either. Uh, but I think there are UFOs. Okay, once again, thanks everybody. And you know what's coming next. It's Look and Listen. Look and Listen. 20 astronauts have been chosen by NASA. 10 astronomers have been hired for the new observatory. Special food hasn't been developed for the astronauts yet. Has the space station been checked for safety? Read and repeat. Review. Okay, now let's do some exercises. I'll give you a sentence in the active voice. You put it into the passive, and let's use only present simple. Rosa, you may go first. Okay. Here's your sentence. The planets 
orbit the sun? That's so easy. The sun is orbited by the planets. Good. The sun is orbited by the planets. The sun is orbited by the planets. Okay, Lewis, you do this one. Meteor writes, often create craters where on Earth? Craters are often created by meteorites on Earth. Good, good answer. Craters are often created by meteorites on Earth. Craters are often created by meteorites on Earth. Be careful, this is crater, this is created, created. There's nothing, they are completely different. You remember crater, and this is create, it's like make, to make. Okay, Monica, the last one. Let's see, hopefully I can fit this one in. The USA uses laser beams to measure distance in space. That's simple. Distance is measured by laser beams in space by the USA. Okay, let's do that one. Distance is measured. I can just reach down here. Distance is measured uh, by laser beams in space by the USA. Distance is measured by laser beams in space by the USA. Very good, thank you. Now let's do an exercise with the, with the passive voice using the simple past. So I'll write you a sentence and I'll leave a blank and then I want you to write, uh, make for me the passive sentence. So I'll write you an active sentence with a space, with a gap, and you give me the passive uh, sentence. Monica, here's your one. Johannes, Johannes Kepler, something the first astronomical telescope in 1611. A long time ago now. Johannes Kepler, something the first astronomical telescope in 1611. Now you have to change it to the passive. Okay, that's not difficult. The first astronomical telescope was invented by Johannes Kepler in 1611. Good. The first astronomical telescope was invented by Johannes Kepler in 1611. First astronomical telescope was invented by Johannes Kepler in 1611. Who's next? Rosa, you do this one. The Soviet Union, something Sputnik in 1957. Sputnik was a satellite. Yeah, Sputnik was launched by the Soviet Union in 1957. Very good. Sputnik was launched by Soviet Union in 1957. And Lewis, last one for you. Now, Thomas, Harriet, something the first maps of the moon in 1609. Thomas Harriot, something, the first maps of the moon in 1609. The first maps of the moon were drawn by Thomas Harriot in 1609. Excellent, okay. The first maps of the moon were drawn by Thomas Harriet in 1609.
the first maps of the moon were drawn by Thomas Harriot in 1609. Excellent job, everybody. Superb job. Let's do another exercise, and we'll try something new this time. This time, I'll write a sentence, and there'll be a mistake in the sentence. And you have to find the mistake, and then correct it. And Rosa, you can do the first one. Not all planets is orbited by moons. Not all planets is orbited by moons. What's the mistake? You should change the verb. Not all planets are orbited by moons. So the verb changes? Yes. Okay. Because planets is? Plural. Plural. Okay. So that's the mistake. Ah. Not all planets are orbited by moons. Good. Lewis, you can do this one. Different kinds of spaceships developed by scientists. Different kinds of spaceships developed by scientists. Different kinds of spaceships were developed by scientists. Right, because there's no verb here at all. We, only have, we have the past participle, but no verb to be. So different kind of spaceships were developed by scientists. Monica, last one. Galileo was invented the first telescope. The first telescope was invented by Galileo. first telescope was, was invented, invented by Galileo. Okay. Or we could say, active sentence, Galileo invented. invented the first telescope. That one's active, and this one is passive. Right, well, let's try an exercise now using the passive voice with present continuous. I'll give you a sentence in the active voice, and you change it to the passive, and we'll use the present continuous. And the first sentence goes to Rosa. Scientists are always making new discoveries in space. So that's the active sentence. You change it to the passive. Okay, it's not hard. New discoveries in space are always being made by scientists. Good. New discoveries in space are always being made by scientists. Right, Monica, you try this one. Space scientists are improving computer technology. Computer technology is being improved by space scientists. Good. Computer technology is being improved by space scientists. And Rosa, we'll go back to you for the last one. How about this one? Many countries are using communication Satellites. Can I put this one here? Okay. Satellites. Okay. All right. Communication satellites are being used by many countries. Okay. Hopefully I can do this one. Communication satellites are being used by many countries. Okay, I want each of you to give me a sentence, give me two sentences, using the present perfect in the passive voice. Monica, you can give me sentences use about stars. Mm -hmm. now, Lewis, how about you give me some sentences about astronomers. And Rosa, uh, telescopes, that's a good idea. Telescopes for you. Okay. okay, Monica, what are your sentences? New stars have been scored by an Austrian astronaut. 
And Noah has been filmed. Okay, excellent. New stars discovered by an Austrian astronaut or an Austrian astronomer? Astronomer. Good. Sorry. Your sentence is Lewis. The solar system has been photographed by astronomers. Many maps of the sky has, have been drawn by astronomers. Two excellent sentences. Good. And Rosa? A new space telescope has been made by Kodak. The astronaut's telescope has been lost on the moon. Great job as usual, everyone. Now let's listen and write. Listen and write. Now listen and write these sentences. Number one. Has a new comet been discovered? Number two. Has a new planet been seen? Number three. The Earth is orbited by one moon. Number four. Sunlight is reflected by a mirror. Number five. Pluto was discovered many years ago. Number six, the rocket engines are being started. Number seven, many spaceships are being launched. Number eight, two astronauts have been sent into space. Number nine, Satellites are being used for communication. Number 10. Lasers have been developed for use in space. Now check your work. Number 1. Has a new comet been discovered? Number 2. Has a new planet been seen? Number three, the Earth is orbited by one moon. Number four, sunlight is reflected by a mirror. Number five, Pluto was discovered many years ago. Number six, the rocket engines are being started. Number seven, many spaceships are being launched. Number eight, two astronauts have been sent into space. Number nine, satellites are being used for communication. And number ten, lasers have been developed for use in space. Read the following letter and then answer the questions. Read and answer. Dear Colonel Kano, we are almost ready to celebrate our first anniversary on the moon. A lot of progress has been made since we arrived. For example, a dome has been built. The living quarters are now finished. A garden has been started. The first vegetables were planted two weeks ago. Several scientific discoveries have been made. All of these accomplishments are important, but to tell you the truth, something much more interesting has been happening. The first extraterrestrial has been seen. Her name is Susie and she is about a foot long and weighs three kilos. She looks very much like a human and it's a good thing. You see, she is human. Susie was born two days ago. Her proud parents are two of our scientists. Regards, Colonel Kisia. Now listen and answer the questions. Number one, who wrote the letter? Number two, 
What are they almost ready to celebrate? Number three, what has been built? Number four, what has now been finished? Number five, when were the first vegetables planted? Number six, what else has been made? Number seven, how many extraterrestrials have been seen? Number eight, what is her name? Number nine, how much does Susie weigh? And number ten, is Susie really an extraterrestrial? Now check your answers. Number one, who wrote the letter? Colonel Kisia wrote the letter. Number two, what are they almost ready to celebrate? They are almost ready to celebrate their first anniversary on the moon. Number three, what has been built? A dome has been built. Number four, what has now been finished? The living quarters has now been finished. Number five, when were the first vegetables planted? The first vegetables were planted two weeks ago. What else has been made? Number six, several scientific discoveries have been made. Number seven, how many extraterrestrials have been seen? One extraterrestrial has been seen. Number eight, what is her name? Her name is Susie. Number nine, how much does Susie weigh? Susie weighs three kilos. And number ten, is Susie really an extraterrestrial? No, she is a human. See you next time. Practicing English. Hey, you guys, did you read this in the paper today? Read what, Dave? There's this article on space. A number of countries, including the U.S., Russia, China, and some countries in Europe, are looking to launch spaceships to Mars. Yeah, I heard that too. New discoveries are being made every day about other planets in our galaxy. I like reading about new things that are happening and exploring the universe. In fact, I've just thought of a trivia question about space. Does anyone remember who the first person on the moon was? Hmm, that's easy. The first person on the moon was an American astronaut, Neil Armstrong. That's right, Monica. Okay, good start. Does anyone remember the year that this happened? Hmm, I know I wasn't born yet, but my older brother was seven. Hmm. I know, the moon was first visited by humans in 1969. Yes, well done, you're correct. Dave, what else does your article say? Well, as you know, the sun is orbited by nine planets. Different countries are sending ships into space to explore the unknown parts of our solar system. I know this is an age-old question about space travel, but it's so expensive. A lot of people feel that the money that is being spent could be better used here on Earth. It sounds like you feel the same way. Am I right? Well, when I read articles about the money that is being spent to send scientists into space, and then I read about schools that have no books, old people having no place to live, it makes me wonder. Are we spending this money the right way? Well, you know, the other side of the argument is that the research that is being done may find amazing drugs that cure cancer, AIDS, or other terrible diseases. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. But, you know, there are a lot of problems here on Earth, and the money could be used to change people's lives now. Well, the article I'm reading says that the concerns you have mentioned are very real. It also says that the earliest people could visit Mars is in about 10 to 15 years. Hmm. I've always wondered what it would be like to be in space for months at a time. 
Well, Monica, you raise a good point. How long do you think it would take to travel to Mars? Hmm, good question. Let me think. Does anybody else want to guess? I'm thinking a month or two of traveling to Mars. Hmm, guess again. Okay, about six months. You're both wrong. Would you believe that if we launched a ship to Mars today, even at a very fast speed, it would take 13 months to get there? You're joking. That's unbelievable. That long? Yes, and it creates another problem as well. It takes a lot of fuel and power to get a ship to Mars. And once we get the ship there, it takes an equal amount of power to get the ship back. And the trip home will take another 13 months. Hmm. I'm really wondering how long a trip like this would be. Sounds like a person could be gone for three years or more. That's a long time to be anywhere. Just think, though, what an honor it would be to enter history as the first person to set foot on the red planet, Mars. Yeah. It would be amazing to be like Neil Armstrong. It would be a tremendous achievement. All this talk about the planets and Mars and space travel has made me want to learn more about our solar system. If Mars is the next planet man will visit, what's the next planet after that? Saturn? Jupiter? Dave, your students might find this an interesting topic to write about in class. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I'll do a web search and see what I can find on Mars exploration. Then we can talk about it in class. Hmm, okay. Dave, how are you going to get your students to talk or write about this topic? Well, let's take Carrie's idea. Is this a good way for humans to be spending their money? Maybe we can get them to debate the point. What problems will arise? What are the benefits of space exploration? What will we gain and at what cost? Hmm. Dave, reading this article really got us all thinking about this interesting topic. Thanks. Let us know how it goes with your students, okay? Of course.